Today we're going to begin week one of four weeks in a row where we focus entirely on filtration. We'll briefly touch on mechanical, chemical, and biological, but we're going to save those for later videos. Today we're going to talk about filtration types. All in one, hang on the back, power filters, sumps, canisters, you name it, we're going to talk about it today. A big thanks as always to our sponsor, Coral Vault, www.coral-vault.com. Not only can you get premium imported and what you see is what you get aquaculture products, but they are also sponsoring a huge 4th of July giveaway. So set an alert right now, July 4th, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. A new gallery video is going to drop and we're going to tell you how to enter to win over $2,000 of corals given away for free by Coral Vault. So thank you, Coral Vault, for sponsoring them. Check it out, coral-vault.com. Hey everybody, Matthew here from My First Fish Tank in collaboration of course with Marine Depot bringing you week 19 in the beginner how-to guide for saltwater aquariums and reef tanks, a filtration overview. My blogger Max and I have been working on having a soft launch for our new Patreon and YouTube memberships. The Patreon is going to be pretty awesome. There's going to be three different tiers. If you click on the link below, it'll just say Patreon. You can check them out. We're going to be offering all sorts of exclusives just for our Patreon members that are going to include things like early release content, content only for Patreon members, and we're going to do a monthly giveaway only for Patreon members. So check it out, Patreon, click the link below. It's just a soft launch. We'll talk more about it in the future. This week, we're really going to focus on the styles of filtration, all-in-one systems, hang-on-the-back systems, power filters, canister filters, sumps. We're going to spend weeks 20 through 22 diving deep into mechanical, chemical, and biological filtration. We're going to spend a super brief moment right now giving a filtration overview. And when we're talking about filtration, basically all kinds of filtration in an aquarium can boil down to mechanical filtration, chemical filtration, and biological filtration. And we are going to go into a huge amount of detail in the next three weeks tackling each one of these, but I think it's important to understand in a filtration overview what those three are and how they're distinct. I think the most basic way of thinking about mechanical filtration is thinking about how a sponge works. If you have a sponge filter as part of your aquarium filtration, how it works is water passes through the sponge filter and larger pieces of particulate matter. We're talking about free floating algaes, fish food, and fish waste will get trapped on the top. And then how do you remove them? You just pull it out and you rinse it off. So mechanical filtration is any kind of filtration that removes large pieces or even small pieces of physical matter. It's the most basic kind of filtration and probably the most, if not the most essential filtration in any aquarium, whether we're talking fresh water or salt water. There are many ways to accomplish mechanical filtration from sponges to filter socks to filter floss to more advanced techniques like protein skimmers. But all of them accomplish the same thing. They will remove large particulate matter, fish food and fish waste, that you will then pull out and rinse off. And the goal of any sort of mechanical filtration is to remove that particulate matter before it breaks down into ammonia and adds unwanted nutrients like phosphates and nitrates to your tank. Filtration type number two is chemical filtration. And chemical filtration is any sort of chemical media that you add. The most common types are activated carbon, granular ferric oxide. And what happens is water passes over that chemical media and usually removes things. So an easy way to understand this is think about activated carbon. It's that black charcoal stuff. Through a process called adsorption, water will pass over and through that activated carbon, removing things like colors, smells, heavy metals, and chlorines and chloramines. There are multiple ways of doing chemical filtration from something as simple as having a mesh bag that you put that chemical media in to using high-end reactors that will force water through that chemical media. Chemical media is often overused in this hobby, but it's really important to have a good understanding of it because when things can go wrong in your tank, it's important to know what kind of chemical media can be your friend and which kinds to stay away from. And the third and last type of filtration is biological filtration. If you watched the last two videos, we did in-depth into the nitrogen cycle, and that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about filtration that helps move that nitrogen cycle along from N2 in the atmosphere to ammonium to nitrite to nitrate 
and back to atmospheric nitrogen again. This is accomplished through beneficial bacteria. And when we're talking about biological filtration, we're talking about providing the home and the food source to help those biological bacteria, those beneficial bacteria grow and thrive to help consume that ammonia, consume that nitrite, consume that nitrate, and complete the nitrogen cycle. And we can do this through sand, through rock, or through more complicated measures like vodka dosing, sugar dosing, carbon dosing, or using a bio pellet reactor. But we'll touch more on that in a few weeks. All right, now onto the meat of this video, aquarium filtration styles. There's really three that are really common in the saltwater aquarium hobby, but we'll throw in a fourth, especially if you're coming over from freshwater, because you may be able to repurpose a filter style that you already have. The first filtration style for an aquarium is a hang on the back filter. This is really when you get a cheap glass box from any big box aquarium store. And there's no holes drilled anywhere in it, or there's no baffles in it. It's just literally a black box. Just think, for example, my 40 gallon breeder tank right here. It's just a glass box that I bought from PetSmart or Petco. A hang on the back filter, which is also called a power filter, is really any sort of filter that hangs on the side. And what it does is it uses a pump to suck water up into this filter. The water passes through various stages of media and filtration, and then it overflows back into the tank. It's a really simple filter that can work perfectly well for saltwater aquariums. And they vary in size. You can get really small ones or really big ones with smaller, less powerful pumps or bigger, more powerful pumps. A huge pro of using a hang on the back filter or a power filter is it's very inexpensive and you can pick it up from any big box store. Not only is the power filter itself inexpensive, but just picking up a glass tank during the dollar per gallon sale at PetSmart or Petco means that you can build a saltwater aquarium for an incredibly cheap amount of money. But there are some obvious cons of this. The first big con is, is it's a relatively small area. So while most power filters have space for putting in a sponge, maybe a packet of carbon or granule ferric oxide, they don't have space usually for larger reactors or protein skimmers. So you're a little bit more limited. The other kind of negative thing about a power filter is it's just unsightly. When you build something really beautiful that has this infinite look top with no pipes or tubing hanging out the side, and then all of a sudden you get a huge box you have to hang on the side. It just doesn't look very nice. But if you're looking to start out on a budget, and not only that, but if you wanna have the most simple type of aquarium filter possible, then a hang on the back filter or a power filter is the perfect place to start because one, it's inexpensive, but two, you can't tinker too much. I know my biggest problem when I started in the hobby is I would tinker constantly because I had a big sump and I just messed around with all sorts of things that ended up causing a lot more harm than good. And if you have a simple power filter and you only lightly stock your tank, then you're just gonna have a simple sponge, maybe a carbon packet, and maybe you throw some ceramic media in there to aid in the biological filtration, but that's really all you can do. Aquarium filtration style number two is what we call an all-in-one system. This is a total misnomer because when you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna buy an all-in-one system, that means that I'm gonna buy an all-in-one system and it's gonna come with a tank, it's gonna come with pumps, with wave makers, with sand, with lights, with everything. But really in this hobby, what we mean by an all-in-one system is a rear filtration chamber. So you take that initial tank, just those four glass walls that we already talked about, and you put a baffle in somewhere. The baffle is usually in the back, and you separate the display portion of the tank from the filtration. Now, what's really cool about this is you don't need a sump, you don't need any holes drilled in it, but you can hide all of your filtration gear in a rear filtration chamber. So generally speaking, how this works is water will flow over the baffle. You'll usually see these slots in the baffle in the back. It's called a surface skim, and water will flow over into some sort of mechanical filtration, then it will go down through the mechanical filtration into a larger chamber where you could put a refugium even, you could put a protein skimmer, you could even have a small reactor in that chamber. And then it will flow into a final chamber that houses a return pump, which will then pump the water back. The really good thing about an all-in-one system is it allows for a lot more filtration options. Now, not as much as some other ones we're gonna talk about, but you can put a lot more in a real filtration chamber than you can in a power filter just because it's so much larger. And not only that, but an all-in-one system also does a surface skim. 
If you just get a power filter and put it on, oftentimes what that means is you're pulling water from below the surface and you might notice over time some sort of protein buildup. It'll look kind of off white, it'll discolor the top and that's kind of hard to get rid of. But in a rear filtered system, an all-in-one system, the water naturally overflows which take those proteins with it and it gets filtered out in the rear filtration chamber. Definite pros to this system is it's a little bit more expensive than getting a power filter but not nearly as expensive or complicated as involving a sump let's say and not only that is it's also relatively beautiful you don't have to put on there a giant power filter rather you just have this little baffle and water flows into the back if we're looking at my two tanks back here both the seahorse tank is an all-in-one system with a rear filtration chamber and my 24 gallon fluval mixed reef tank are all in one systems. The definite cons are you don't have as many options as a sump system. You can't put a ton of things in there and typically the reactors and the protein skimmers you buy for an all in one system have to be really small and often don't work as well as their larger counterparts. But for beginners, I always, always recommend getting an all in one system because it's that great middle ground between something clunky with a small amount of filtration like a hang on the back filter and a large sump which may just overcomplicate things as you're starting out. The third kind of filtration is a canister filter. Now, especially in the United States, you don't see a lot of saltwater hobbyists using a canister filter. These are much more popular in other parts of the world, but if you are a freshwater guy or gal, then you might already have a large canister filter sitting around. You could use that for your saltwater filtration. For those of you that don't know what a canister filter is, just think of a large canister. It sits outside of your tank and it has a pump inside. And the pump draws water out of your tank, it passes through this canister and then that same pump pushes it back into the tank. In that canister, you can put whatever you want. Typically, you'll have forms of mechanical, chemical, and biological filtration. It might start out with a sponge or filter floss at the top of the canister. Then below that, you might put some carbon media or some GFO media. And then below that, you may have some ceramic media or some plastic bio balls. And it really is a decent filter. Some of the negatives of a canister filter is they often don't put out quite enough flow because on the freshwater side, you don't need a lot of flow. You might only have to turn over your total water volume one to two times an hour, meaning if you have a 100 gallon tank, if you had a 150 to 200 gallon pump, that might be sufficient. But in the salt water world, we like to turn over that water volume five to 10 times. So for a 100 gallon tank, we're looking somewhere around 500 to 1,000. And I know some hobbyists that like to have even more than 10 times filtration power. So you do have to buy a larger canister filter and sometimes that can be a little bit more expensive and a little bit harder to find. Not only that, but with a canister filter, you do have a large canister. You can often hide that in a cabinet, but sometimes it just has to sit next to your tank so it doesn't look quite as nice. Another issue with a canister filter is you have to have a way to get water to and from the canister filter. And usually that means you have to have some sort of pipes and tubing that come over the back edge. While it's not a huge ugly thing to look at, especially when compared with a hang on the back power filter, it's not quite as clean necessarily as something like a rear filtration chamber or a sump system. But by all means, you can totally have a successful saltwater tank by using a canister filter. But if you do have an old canister filter, by all means, check it out. See how many gallons per hour the pump is, upgrade it a little bit if you need to, and you can put whatever media you need and have a perfectly well-functioning saltwater aquarium using a canister filter. And the fourth and final type of aquarium filtration style we're gonna talk about today is a sump. And this is probably the filtration style par excellence that most hobbyists want because it gives you the most options. A sump is just basically a large second aquarium that usually sits directly below. Here, let me show you. This is my clownfish harem tank. Up here is the display tank and the water travels from here through pipes to tubing down to a second smaller aquarium basically where I house all of my filtration gear. Sumps are awesome. There are so many benefits to sumps and if you can afford it and are up for a challenge, by all means, get a system with a sump. First off, a sump increases the water volume of your tank. Whereas this might only be 40 to 50 gallons, combined down here, that's a 60 gallon system. And larger volumes of water 
typically equal more stability for beginners and for everybody, so it's easier to control your water parameters. Now, how sumps generally work is there are holes drilled in the bottom of your tank. It can be two holes, three holes, or four holes, depending on what sort of filter setup you have. And then you have what's called a weir, which is just a little dam, and it's either inside the tank or on the back edge of the tank, and water flows over the top, just like it did in the all-in-one system, and it travels down those tubes into the sump. In the sump, it passes through various stages into the final stage, which has a return pump, and pumps that water back to the system. A typical sump setup does have various stages. The first stage is gonna go into some sort of mechanical filtration. Typically, that can be a sponge, filter floss, or a filter sock, like I have in this system here. From there, it's gonna to go to a main large compartment. And that large compartment is meant for a protein skimmer. And a protein skimmer is probably considered the most important part of your mechanical filtration for any large system. We'll go way more into depth about how protein skimmers work because they're a little confusing, but they're quite large and they need a large chamber. From that large protein skimming chamber, sometimes it goes into a second large chamber where you can put in a refugium. It travels over a little baffle into a small compartment that's a bubble trap that stops all the bubbles and into the final chamber, which is the return chamber where you house your return pump. Sumps are great because you don't have to look at any of your filtration gear. All of your filtration gear, your heaters, your skimmers, your reactor, your UV sterilizer, whatever you have can all be housed underneath the tank in the sump and you don't have to look at it at all, which is fantastic. Not only that, but it increases your options dramatically. If you're having a problem and you need to add some sort of chemical media or some sort of biological media, you have the space to put it and you don't have to mess with your display tank. A huge downside of having a sump is sump systems are generally more expensive because you're getting a lot more gear. It's also a lot more complicated for a beginner because unless you buy a system that comes pre-plumbed, you're gonna have to figure out how to do the plumb. And even the major brands, the Red Sea, the Waterbox, the JBJ, the Innovator Marine Tanks, that come with sumps, they will come with prefabricated plumbing, but you still have to be able to figure out how to put all that together. And if you're doing it yourself, it can get really complicated really fast. How do you drill the holes in the glass? Do you use soft plumbing and hard plumbing? Do you know how to plumb? Do you understand how the different parts of PVC work? What kind of unions? What kind of adjustment valves? It can get complicated. But if you're up for a challenge, a sump is fantastic. And as long as you don't try to over filter everything, it will give you options, not only now, but in the future to grow and to tackle any problems that you might see. Now I get it, you might be like, wait, but you didn't explain anything about filtration. You didn't talk about how protein skimmers work or what reactors were or what, what are, what's an algae scrubber or a UV sterilizer. Stay tuned because the next three videos, we're gonna go through first mechanical filtration, then chemical filtration, then biological filtration, and we'll touch on every single piece of gear you could ever think of so you understand how it works. Well, that's it for week 19. Next week, week 20, mechanical filtration. If you found this helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to My First Fish Tank and to Marine Depot. And as always, everybody, happy reefing. Be well, take care. We'll see you next time.